the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Jimmy, have you been to the children's orthopedic ward lately? No, not in several weeks, I guess. Why? Because it's so overcrowded, we had to turn away four youngsters this week. Oh. There were no beds for them. Yeah, and no money to enlarge the ward either. I guess it does take donations to add rooms to a hospital, but it seems to me that you can always squeeze in a few extra beds somehow. Does, huh? Diane is waiting in the children's ward for me now. Come along and see for yourself. Well, Miss Verner, uh, Dr. Kildare seems to think you can squeeze a few extra beds or cots in here somewhere. Well, what do you think now, Jimmy, now that you're here? Uh, Diana, I'll admit, it's so crowded you can hardly walk between the beds. We should take this up with Dr. Carew. Why get irritated talking to him? Let's try to do something ourselves. Mm. All right, Diana, now where are those youngsters you wanted me to see? Over there, Dr. Gillespie. There's Beth, who seems to be improving every day. And little Donnie, who... Well, he, he just doesn't seem to want to get better. Donnie, yeah. Uh, probably needs a pep talk, eh, Doctor? <laughs> he needs something, I guess. Something that's not in the textbooks. All right, Diana, let's see the girl. Certainly, Doctor. Well, Beth, look who's here. Dr. Kildare and Dr. Gillespie. Got a nice big smile for them? I'm getting better, aren't I, Doctor? I can go home soon, too. Can't I? I certainly think so, honey. Don't you, Doctor? Oh, let me see you move that arm now, Beth. Well, better, girl. Last week, I couldn't lift my arm any higher than this. Uh Uh-huh. And how high do you think you'll be able to lift it next week? (laughs) Well, Beth, at this rate, you'll be home sooner than anyone expects. (laughs) He certainly will, (laughs) And between the two of us, young lady, you're quite a little doll. Oh, Dr. Gillespie, I think you're a doll, too. (laughs) Come on, Doctor, before we make Diana jealous. Donnie. Donnie, there are some friends of yours here who'd like to talk to you. Why, Donnie, Dr. Gillespie and I came here to help you grow up to be an all-American quarterback. Don't want to be no quarterback. All right, then. All right, all right. We'll make you an ace baseball pitcher. You got the arm for it, you know. I don't want to be a... Poor little guy. Oh, come on now, Donnie. How are Dr. Gillespie and I going to check you over if you bury yourself in your pillow? Go away, doctor. Please go away. Will you stop crying if Miss Verna reads your story? Uh-uh. Uh, well, then, how about some nice new comic books? I... I'd like some comics, maybe. I thought so. Diana, mm-hmm. how about going down to the magazine stand and getting Donnie some comics? New comics, huh? Why, of course, Donnie. <laughs> and get the good kind, too. You know, the uh, super superheroes, the kind you always get for yourself? <laughs> yeah, that's right, Miss Verna. The kind Dr. Kildare always reads over your shoulder. <laughs> Well, Donnie, we'll have you hitting on all 12 soon. You'll see. Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie. 
Please report to Dr. Carew's office as soon as possible. Ah, uh, what the tarnation does Carew want with me now? Well, I wouldn't know, but since he is in his office, if you don't mind, I think I'll just tag along and see if he won't do something about this children's ward. Dr. Carew, I came along with Dr. Gillespie because I'd like to discuss the conditions in the children's orthopedic ward. I am fully aware of them, Dr. Kildare, and I'm trying to find a solution. But at the moment, I haven't time to talk about kiddies. Ah, kiddies. Why the tarnation do some people have to call them kiddies? Is there anything wrong with calling them children? Not at all, Dr. Gillespie, not at all. Huh. But I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to postpone this discussion. You see... We have a patient entering the hospital this morning who will require your complete attention as well as Dr. Kildare's. Ooh. And who is the millionaire that can afford that kind of attention? I am about to tell you his name, but in the very strictest of confidence. Yeah? He is a man I am sure you know as well as 150 million other Americans. Our patient, gentlemen, is none other than Buck Houston. Who? Houston, Doctor. Buck Houston. <laughs> Well, with Carew involved, I knew there'd be a buck in it someplace. (laughs) No, Dr. Gillespie. Buck Houston happens to be, to the current generation, what the dead-eyed dick was to yours. Well, uh, how old do you think I am? (laughs) Well, let's say old enough to be getting mellow, Doctor. Uh... However, to bring you completely up to date, Buck Houston is the country's number one cowboy actor. By the great horn spoon. A cowboy. Uh, Yes, indeed. (laughs) Well, Dr. Carew, what about Buck Houston? Uh, He's here in New York to make personal appearances. And uh, his physician, a former colleague of mine, Mm. just telephoned from Hollywood to tell me that uh, Mr. Houston is entering Blair General Hospital on his recommendation. Well, what's wrong with this actor? Trying to wear a ten-gallon hat on a five-gallon head? Not at all. From what I gather, he's suffering a severe back or leg injury. Oh, Mm. probably fell off a horse. I don't believe so, Dr. Kildare. However... He'll be here within the hour, and I'm expecting both you and Dr. Gillespie to examine him and uh, furthermore to remember that there is to be absolutely no publicity. (laughs) Anytime you got a case in the hospital, Carew, where there's no publicity, I'll be there just out of sheer curiosity. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Houston... Now, uh... wait just a minute there, you young sawbones. I ain't Mr. Houston to nobody. I'm just plain Buck. (laughs) All right, then. Buck? Uh, Now, the pain you're complaining of seems to go from the sacroiliac joint in your back running down here into your thigh and all along your leg? Yeah, oh, ouch! Yeah, it it goes just about that way. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Gillespie? Well... This away or that away or any way you're figuring it out, it, it seems to be sciatic neuritis. Sciatic? What did you call that again, Doc? I didn't quite get that ear down. Sciatic neuritis, Buck. It's an irritation of the sciatic nerve brought about by, well, something we will now have to determine. Did you have a fall from your horse? From good old Storm Cloud? No, sir. Why, Storm Cloud's the greatest partner a man ever had. Compadres, man and boy. Ever since he is a colt, me and Storm Cloud has been just like that. Uh huh. Well, then, have you any idea what might have caused it? No, no, I ain't. But I'm telling you, this hurts so bad, I'm about to throw a rubber tail hissy fit. I don't even know whether I'm going to be able to ride my show. And that would sure disappoint a heap of kiddies. Kiddies. Why, Doc, now don't tell old Buck that you don't like young'un. I just don't like anyone calling young uns kiddies. Uh, Miss Verner, would you take the blankets off, Mr. Houston? Certainly, Doctor. Uh, what you up to, Doc? Oh, well, just a few preliminary tests, Buck. Shouldn't bother you at all. He hopes. Mm, how's that? Mm. It ain't no better, it ain't no worse. Yeah, no diminution of the ankle reflexes. Try the Lasag test, Doctor. Good idea. Here. Now, hold on there, Doc. Now, what you doing with my leg? Just moving it up. Oh, your abdomen. Oh. That hurt? Well, no, don't hurt none. Well, the sure ain't comfortable, neither. Diana, will you call X-Ray and arrange for a series of plates on Mr. Houston? Yes, sir. Complete set on the lower back, especially sacroiliac. 
Yeah, and while you're at it, nurse, have them run a panda pack myelogram for lesions. Well, goodness, Doc kept there sounds real serious. <laughs> you know us old sore bones try to make everything sound serious. Oh, hmm. What we want to do, Buck, is not only relieve you of this pain, but stop your condition from becoming any more serious so you can get to your show. That's right. We wouldn't want uh, you to disappoint them there, kiddies. <laughs> For the love of Hippocrates, Carew, will you stop old deering all over the place? Leave Jimmy and me alone till we check these x-rays and lab reports? Well, all right. But you've got to do everything you can. Well, what do you make of the x-rays, Dr. Gillespie? Detect any tumors, any indications of arthritis? No, no herniated discs either, judging from the plate. And still he exhibits positive symptoms of sciatic neuritis, except, of course, there was no Lasagne sign. And the ankle reaction was negative. Mm -hmm. did, did you notice his eyes? No. Eyes? No, why? Well, they're old, Jimmy. Old and bored and tired. Oh, he gave his age as 38. Certainly you don't call 38 old. <laughs> well, Jack Benny says he's 39. No, sir, I'm afraid Houston's reported age misses the truth by close to 20 years. A young man I'm old enough to know. Oh, yes. Dead-eye dick, no doubt. Ah, uh, Old or not? I think that Houston sciatica, as painful as it may be, is all in his mind. Psychosomatic. Great gilded glory, Jimmy. Is it psychosomatic when a man's middle-aged and worn out from those blasted kiddies he keeps talking about? Well, I don't know about that, but either way, we've got to question him. If we can coax the truth out of him, we'll soon find out who's right. Well, before we question Buck Houston too much, my professional advice is... You rope him to the bed with your stethoscope while I ride to get the posse at Eagle Pass. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, the two old sawbones, come in, come on in. Afternoon there, uh, Bob. Uh, I mean, howdy, partner. <laughs> Buck, Dr. Gillespie and I would like to talk to you confidentially. You mean, compadres, that you've cut sign on this thing that's got poor old Buck bedded down? Buck, I'm sorry to tell you this, but we think that between us, we have. Sorry, shuckings. This is the happiest day of my life. And today may have started out that way, Buck, but what Dr. Gillespie and I are going to tell you, we don't think is going to be particularly good news. You mean I ain't going to be able to make my show? And I'm going to have to disappoint all them thousands of kiddies? No. No, you're going to be able to make your show. Buck, there's nothing wrong with you that isn't in your mind. Oh, now, look here, Doc. You know, there's an old saying out west that goes, you can't fool a horse fly. And here in the hospital, Buck, you can't fool the doctor. Well, my stars and slippers, are you aiming to say that something's Andy Godlin with me upstairs in my head? Oh, certainly not. <laughs> At least not the way you mean. Buck, the way I figure it, for some reason, you're resentful of being the popular hero that you are. And that's brought about a deep sense of guilt inside you. Besides, you can't fool an old man. And, Houston, you're past 50, and you know it. Well, well I'm a gotcheared safety cat. You know, this isn't a pleasant thing to have to tell a patient. But we're not denying that you are suffering from a mentally induced sciatica. 
Because no matter how it's induced, sciatica is painful, very painful. Well, I know, but... Yeah, now, if you'll cooperate with us, let down your hair, Buck. Dr. Kildare and I hope we can show you what's causing this sciatica and get you out of here feeling like a new man. <laughs> yeah, now that's pretty far and square, ain't it, partner? Well, doggone it. That gummit, I didn't ever think... It, I... Well, Buck, have you got the intestinal fortitude to face the truth? Oh, what's the use? You've hit the nail right on the head. By the great horns, Bone Jimmy. You hear that? He's lost his Western accent. Well, why shouldn't I? If I talk anything, I ought to talk straight New York. You mean you were born here? Fifty-three years ago, Doc. That's where I got my stage name, Houston. Oh, Houston's a famous Texas name, Sam Houston. Sure, but it's also a famous Lower East Side name, the street where I was born. Except here in New York, you pronounce it Houston. <laughs> well, you fooled me. That's the trouble, Doctor. I fooled everybody too long. Oh, what do you mean, fooled? Oh, it was all right when I first hit it lucky as a movie cowboy and a few kids would stare at me. But so help me, afterwards it grew to be thousands of youngsters following me around. Overnight, there came to be millions. And then they wouldn't go to sleep without Buck Houston pillows and Buck Houston blankets. And they wouldn't eat unless it was out of a Buck Houston plate or a Buck Houston cup. It... it... Well, Doctor, that's the guilt complex, isn't it? Uh, maybe. But we've still got to find out what made him give in to this defensive sciatica. I think it could be weariness. Weariness? Yeah. Have you ever made 20 personal appearances in one day? Have you any idea what it means to pick up 40 and 50-pound youngsters and haul them up on top of your horse so they can have their pictures taken when you're hardly able to lift your arms after 10 hours of it? No, but we're starting to get a good idea. What else, Buck? What else? Isn't it enough knowing that you're a worn-out man who has to have a double to do everything but mount a horse? And, and these kids thinking you, you're some sort of a... <laughs> I guess that pretty well fills in the picture, eh, Doctor? His subconscious supplied the sciatica so he couldn't be forced to appear before the public in person. Uh, mine's a strange thing, Buck. And you shouldn't feel too bad about giving in the way you have. Why, after a few days' rest here, now that the real facts have come out, you'll be able to ride around town carrying five youngsters on your back. Oh, no, not me, Doc. No, not, not me. Don't, don't you see? I'm through. I... Now that the truth's out, and I know it's the truth, I I can't go on fooling him anymore. I just can't. Now, look, Buck, we'll give you some sedatives. Three days of rest, a tonic to build you up. Will you, find will you the... just go away now? Go away. Go on away. You found out what you wanted to know, didn't you? Go, go on. Leave me alone. Buck Houston's all, all through. Oh, but look here. Come on, Jack. Come on. Come on, Jimmy. After 30 years of holding it all in, two-hour cry isn't going to do Buck a bit of harm. Dr. G, why do you refuse to face facts? Between us, we made Houston face facts, and now he wants to throw his whole life away. Quit. Well, why shouldn't he quit? He's tired. He's old. I know what I'm tired. You're you're aging, but are we quitting? Oh, tarnation, Jimmy. Why should Buck go on? He can afford to retire. Best thing that could happen. Well, Doctor, maybe retirement seems more attractive to a man of your years. Your mellow years. Gosh. But for me and for Buck Houston, there's still a lot left in life. And whether you will help or not, I'm going to try to make him realize it. For his own sake and... and the kiddies. Uh... Kildare, I'm telling you for the last time, I am not putting those cowboy clothes on again. But, Buck, you don't want the sciatica to come back, do you? We have a very strong feeling that if we can take an X-ray of you wearing those cowboy clothes and those high-heeled boots, it may show that the boots or, or something else cause a pressure on a nerve, which means the sciatica can come back again any time as long as you live. No. Oh, come on, Buck. Slip into that cowboy regalia and walk down to the X-ray lab with me. But you told me the thing was all in my mind. I know we did, but now we think we may have made a mistake. And if we did, we want to correct it. Well, you already took X-rays dozens of... But not with your clothes on, don't you see? And we think that's where we made our mistake. Well, Buck, 
Okay, if you say so. <laughs> After all, you're the doctor. <laughs> That's the spirit. I'll get out while you're getting dressed, and then I'll take you down for your last trip to X-ray. <laughs> Is, uh, is this the way I went to X-ray before? Seems to me it was on the other side of the building. No, we have uh, another X-ray room in this wing. Oh, I see. Oh, here comes Dr. Gillespie. Yes, I see, Buck. All right, now let's go through this door. Wait a minute. Buck, where are you going all togged out in that outfit? Oh, in the X-ray room here. X-ray? What, the X-ray room's way uh, in the It's right through but... this door. Come on, Buck. See you later, Dr. Gillespie. Right on, nation. I don't know what you're up to, Jimmy, but I'm coming along. Hey, Doc, this isn't X-ray. This place is full of youngsters. X-ray, uh, <laughs> well, maybe it is, Jimmy. I can see clean through you right children, now. Children, 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 will you quiet down, please, because Dr. Gillespie and I have a surprise for you. Now, see who we brought to visit? <laughs> well, I'll be blamed to know him. You see, Dr. Gillespie, there isn't a child in America who doesn't know him by sight. Uh. Well, howdy there, partner. Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> howdy. Mr. Houston, Mr. Houston, will you come over here so I can touch you? Well, now you look here, Sugarfoot. I ain't Mr. Houston to nobody. I'm just plain Buck. <laughs> you wait just a second, Beth. You see, Buck came up here especially to see Donnie. Come on, Buck. Doctor? No, what? Donnie? Uh, Donnie, we brought someone here who wants to meet you. You can't fool me. Nobody wants to meet me. What? Why, what is that? Why, I come all the way from my ranch here to New York just to meet the littlest big man I ever heard about. What's his name, Doc? Donnie O'Brien. All the way to New York to meet Donnie O'Brien. Jiminy Christmas. It's, it's really Buck. Buck Houston. Well, howdy, partner. Butter's there. Golly. Gosh. Come on up here, son. Old Buck wants to get a good look at you. Easy does now. There. There we are. Well, what do you think, Buck? Hasn't Donnie got the makings of a real He-Man cowpuncher? Why, I ain't never seen a better one. And by darn, if his folks will let me, I'd like to sign him up to a lifetime contract right now. Wrangling horses and punching cattle on my ranch. Gee, Willikers, Buck. Do you mean it? Tell him he's got to get well first. What's the matter, Buck? I bet you don't mean it. When you say that to Buck Houston, Donnie, you better smile. Old cornball. But I was just thinking now, Donnie. You got to get well first. Uh, you reckon you can do that for your old partner? Good old Buck? Oh, gosh, Buck. Sure I can get well. I can get so well it'll let me out of here next week. <laughs> Well, I don't know about next week, Donnie, but I think if we take Buck back to Dr. Gillespie's office now, we can have him put his name to that contract and we'll guarantee delivery of a perfectly healthy Donnie O'Brien to the Double Bar X Ranch by the end of next month. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, Buck, I can't tell you how much everyone at Blair Hospital appreciates this check for the addition to the children's ward. Oh, forget it, Doc. Well, you earned it the way I earned it in the first place, by acting. You call him an actor? Well, I sure do, and a convincing one at that. <laughs> the way he talked me into thinking I was going to x-ray. <laughs> well, when a man's got his mind made up where a thing's a fact, sometimes takes a little white lie to show him the real truth. Mm-hmm. Um... Do you think that youngster, uh, Donnie, is going to get well now? Oh, no question about it. Buck, not only did you give that youngster the desire to live, but you gave him something much more important. You gave him hope. You don't have to be young to have hope. But if you've got hope, you've got a mighty good chance of staying young. Yeah, and I'll say yes to that. 
Well, goodbye, Buck, and... Uh, oh, don't forget those seats you promised us for your show. Oh, why, compadres, the last man that accused Buck Houston of forgetting a friend's buried now. <laughs> Up on Boot Hill. <laughs> well, by John Nation, you've forgotten something. And I'm not signing your discharge from this hospital till I get it. Till you get it? What is it, Doc? You're not leaving here till I get a picture personally autographed and reading... To the old sawbones, Doc Gillespie, and all the kiddies, signed your faithful compadre, Buck Houston. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Paul Franklin and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Ted Osborne, Georgia Ellis, Barton Yarborough, Johnny McGovern, and Mary McGovern. Dick Joy speaking.